Hi, this is Squad, and in this video, I want to tell you about skin, gland, and tooth signaling. Three types of uh, cells make all human body. They are endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. Ectoderm makes skin, gland, and tooth. This is ectoderm, and some places bulge out, and eventually this bulge would develop into different structures like gland or even tooth. And the signaling for this change happens because the cells here that bulge have special receptors and other cells, including the neighboring cells, secrete special ligand that binds to these receptors and tell those cells to start differentiation. Let me tell you about signaling. The thing that the neighboring ectoderm or other cell secrete is called EDA. I'll get to why it's called EDA later. And these receptors are the EDA receptors. And this signaling system is similar to that of EPO, where kidney makes a lot of EPO ligands and EPO ligands travel throughout the body, but only some cells can receive EPO ligand and uh, do some work. And those cells are the red blood cell precursors. Just as EPO system, many cells secrete EDA, but only some cells, like cells around here, have the EDA receptor. Here is a EDA ligand, and uh, here is a cell. Maybe this is one of the cells in this region. And this cell has receptor. And these receptors are the EDAR receptors. And here's another receptor. And this EDA can bind to a receptor and three receptors polymerize. But this receptor itself doesn't have a cytoplasmic signaling sequence. So another protein comes to help the signaling. And this is the EDAR adapter, ADD. And EDR ADD is going to help send the signal inside of the cell. And this signal leads to activation of another protein called IKK. And IKK's job is to release NF kappa B, which is another protein that is being bound and uh, stuck to a protein called IKB. This is the IKK that gets activated to release NF kappa B from this IKB. Why does NF kappa B have to be bound? It's because NF kappa B is a transcription factor. Okay, but with this freeing, NF kappa B can now go to the nucleus and there it's going to change the gene expression of many genes. So in summary, EDA ligand is secreted by many cell types, mostly ectoderms, and they go to many places, but other ectoderms with special receptor called EDAR can bind to EDA and send a signal intracellularly with the help of EDAR adapter. And this signal leads to activation of IKK, which is going to act on IKB, and IKB releases NF kappa B, which is going to go to the nucleus and change gene expression of the cell. The cell is going to change its structure and function and begin to develop into structure like full skin, gland, and tooth. And this EDA signaling is not necessary to maintain skin, gland, tooth, but it's just needed to trigger this differentiation. And this cellular signaling is part of the TNF and F kappa B signaling. And this family of signaling has lots of input, but eventually leads to activation of a transcription factor NF kappa B. Here are some examples of activating this NF kappa B. TNF alpha, which is a cytokine released by many immune cells, can bind to cells with a TNF receptor. And the TNF receptor also, like EDA receptor, doesn't have a good cytoplasmic signaling domain. So an adapter called TRADD comes and helps the receptor to send the signal intracellularly, eventually activating IKK. And here's another example. Bacteria has special molecule called lipopolysaccharides. And a lot of your immune cells have toll-like receptor that can bind to lipopolysaccharide. And the toll-like receptor can also activate IKK. And here's another example. When a body needs to increase its temperature, cells send the molecule IL-1 throughout the body. And IL-1 works on cells, those in the hypothalamus that have IL-1 receptor, and these cells trigger response and eventually also activating IKK. And finally, UV light act on your cells 
We still don't know exactly what happens, but UV light works on something and this thing can activate IKK. Now, all of these entry to the activation of IKK results in freeing of NF kappa B from IKB so that NF kappa B can change gene expression. Now let me tell you why this ligand is called EDA. This is because there was a disease called ectoderm dysplasia and hydrotic EDA. And people with this disease have poor skin, poor glands, and poor teeth. And when people looked at these people's DNA, they found that they had a problem with sequences of chromosome X, chromosome 2, or chromosome 1. And later, these sequences are found to be on genes, and these genes were named EDA, EDAR, and EDAR adapter. And because EDA is on chromosome X, this disease is more common in males, and the problem in any of these proteins can lead to poor EDA signaling and poor growth of skin, gland, and tooth. But people are working on potential treatment for this disease. And this treatment is possible because as long as something makes EDA, these cells can receive EDA signaling and lead to triggering of skin, gland, tooth differentiation. So if a patient has intact EDAR, gene but problematic EDA gene then it's possible to administer to this patient EDA protein usually tagged with the FC region of IgG and when people administer proteins they often tag it with the FC region of IgG because IgG itself is very stable because of the FC region and tagging this stable construct is going to make the whole thing stable. So if you administer this protein to a patient with EDA, if it's early enough, maybe during the childhood or even a fetal stage, EDA is going to trigger the existing EDAR and, and kickstart the differentiation of these ectoderm structures. When people did genome-wide association studies, and these are studies that pull together a lot of people. And in this study, they pulled people from different populations of the world, and they looked at the genome of these people to see if they can learn anything. And they found that there was a sequence that's different between populations. And usually, it's difficult to find a sequence that's different between country, ethnicity, but they found one. And this sequence was on the EDAR gene, specifically the 370th amino acid of the EDAR gene was different between populations. The results show that people here had valine at this location, but people here had alanine. This alanine was a recent development in terms of human history. Humans evolved from apes and we moved in general this way. And when we were about here, here, and this is a region near Kazakhstan, this is where I'm from, about um, 60,000 years ago, our genome changed and the resulting amino acid became alanine. And this change was popular and spread throughout the following populations. And the consequence of this valine to alanine change is pretty interesting. For example, hair is thicker in people with alanine, and they also have hair that's more straight. And their incisor, the front teeth, has a shovel-like structure, and their fat pads are smaller and more compact. Their earlobe is more retracted. So if this is a ear, people with alanine will have ear that's smaller in the size of earlobe. Finally, jaw of people with alanine is also retracted. And it turns out that this cell signaling is stronger with people with alanine, leading to more NF kappa B activation. This may be why all these phenotypes are sort of more compact form of ectoderm differentiation by having thicker skin, shovel-like teeth, more compact fat pads, and uh, more retraction of some body features. So in summary, skin gland tooth signaling uses EDA secreted by many cell types and specific ectoderms have EDAR and they can get signal from floating EDA. The signal leads to activation of IKK, which is very common in other types of TNF and NF-kappa B signalings. And eventually the IKK releases NF-kappa B from IKB and NF-kappa B changes gene expression, triggering many differentiation growth. And this EDA signal 
signaling is very important for people because having problem in any of the elements, EDA on chromosome X, EDA on chromosome 2, EDA adapter on chromosome 1 can lead to ectoderm dysplasia and hydrotic. That's a problem in poor development of these structures. And finally, valine is common in more ancestral human populations, while alanine is common in more modern human populations. And this difference leads to visible ectoderm features.